They're everywhere. <laughs> Gettysburg Address will be recited this morning by George Dobbins, a student from the Lions High School. George.
Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. We are now engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those here who gave their lives that, they, that that nation may live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do so. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that which caused, which they have gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here have highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain, and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Thank you, George. Very well done. Our speaker today is Brian McAlow, Town of Lyons Supervisor, and also he's our post uh, adjutant and treasurer. Brian? Thank you, Commander. It's my privilege to speak today on this beautiful day. <clears throat> on this Memorial Day, as we honor the men and women who have so bravely served this nation, let us take a moment to reflect upon the freedom that their service has provided. We are free because our veterans have consistently defended our Constitution. We owe our military, our veterans, and those who gave the ultimate sacrifice the highest form of gratitude. A few weeks ago, I was at a funeral down in Canastota, and at the end of the funeral service, as we were walking out of the cemetery, I couldn't help but notice all the veterans' markers on the graves. I did a quick count, and I was guessing between 25 and 30% had veterans markers on them. That was, a, that was astounding to me. I said to myself that on Memorial Day this year, I was gonna make a commitment to make sure that all of our veterans graves had a flag on it. Yesterday, I had the privilege to do that with my son as him and I walked through rural and Elmwood and made sure that each one had a flag. It was a few touching moments. We did the very best we can, so if anyone knows of a grave not covered with a flag, please let me know and we'll make sure that happens. With that, I'd like to talk a little bit about Memorial Day. Memorial Day. For most, it's a three-day weekend filled with barbecues and picnics. A time to get away from the normal humdrum of the week. For others, it's the beginning of summer. A time to look towards the long, lazy days and a time to plan your summer getaways. Though for some, Memorial Day holds a special significance. On May 5th, 1868, an order was given by General John Logan to establish a day of remembrance for those soldiers who died during the Civil War. May 30th, 1868 was the day designated for this observance and flowers were placed on the graves of the fallen soldiers of both the Union and Confederate armies. New York was the first state to officially recognize this observance in 1873. And in 1971, the passage of the National Holiday Act, Memorial Day, was designated as the last Monday of May. For many of us, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, and the Korean War are ancient history. The Vietnam War, a fading memory. But with recent operations, Desert Storm, Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, as well as operations in Afghanistan and other hot spots around the world, 
We, the American people, have once again been thrust into a position of remembering those who are fighting and dying today. I, like my uncles and friends before me, as well as many that are in our cemeteries today, am a veteran. I am and was proud of serving in the armed forces. I served in the U.S. Army from 1982 through 1985 and was stationed in West Germany. I was stationed in the 1st Armored Division and was a sergeant and a tank commander when I got out. I know and understand what Memorial Day means. There have been a few soldiers who've lived here in Lyons the past few years who have served our country in overseas operations. I talked to one last night. I talked to Lance Corporal Adam Bacon, who served in Iraq in 2009 with Alpha Company, Task Force MP, U.S. Marines, and Lance Corporal Joe Hendler with India Company, U.S. Marines, Afghanistan, who just returned. They know what Memorial Day is about. The second part of the speech that I originally started. Memorial Day for all soldiers is embodied in the words of the oath that you first take when you enlist in the service of our country. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. This oath taken by each and every soldier exemplifies the reasons why soldiers do what they do each and every day. Soldiers are defenders of the same principles that made this country great. They stand as patriots to defend and protect the ideals and sentiments espoused in the Constitution of the United States. Soldiers bear true faith and allegiance to that document, and they work and live with the codes of military justice. Soldiers also obey the orders of the President of the United States and the officers appointed over them. These truths are self-evident in the everyday lives of soldiers. Now, as we see fellow citizens arrive back from foreign land, we should not forget those, those words that each and every soldier spoke upon enlistment. Because when we look upon a returning soldier from conflict, a disabled veteran, or a grave marker, those words should ring in our conscience. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, streaming from the eyes of a returning soldier, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, st sounding from a stumbling gate of a disabled veteran. According to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God, blasting from the cold stone face of a grave marker. Remember those that gave their lives so that we may continue to live in freedom, as spelled out in the Constitution of the United States, and the Declaration of Independence, least we forget. I'd like to share a, a short poem with you. It's called, No, Freedom Isn't Free. <clears throat> I watched the flag pass by one day, it fluttered in a breeze. A young Marine saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud. With hair cut square and eyes alert, he'd stand out in any crowd. I thought how many men like him had fallen through the years, how many died on foreign soil, how many mother's tears. How many pilots' planes shot down, how many died at sea, how many foxholes were soldiers' graves, no, freedom isn't free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to the bugler play and felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times that taps the head meant amen when a flag had draped a coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, of mothers and the wives, of fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about the graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington, no, freedom isn't free. When my son and I were walking yesterday up here on the hill, I came across the grave marker of a PFC, Frederick J. Mays, Jr., United States Army. As I looked, he was, I believe he was killed in the Persian Gulf. He was only 25 years old, so 
So that's what this day means, Memorial Day, to honor those veterans. My sincere thanks to all of you for, com for coming out on this beautiful morning. Let us spend Memorial Day weekend being grateful that we are Americans and grateful to the men and women who serve this nation. May God bless the United States of America, and thank you. Thank you, Brian. We'll now have the scouts put flowers on the graves. Girls, we'll have the VFW party squad for four, please.
our concluding prayer, we'll move on up to Central Park where we conclude our Memorial Day service. Uh, Reverend. Almighty God, again, we come before thee thanking you for this service. We thank you for all that assemble here and those that desire to assemble and just couldn't make it for whatever reason. And we pray, our Father, that whatever was done was pleasing in thy sight. And as we depart from this place, we ask you, please do not depart from our presence. Be with us and stand by us and lead us in the way that you will have us to go. And now may the God of love, peace, and joy be with you all from this day on. In the mighty name of thy God, Jehovah, I pray. Amen. That, that's it for down here. We'll move on up to the Central Park. Thank you, Brian. We will now have the place for the wreaths by members of the Ladies Auxiliary of the VFW and American Legion. Thank you. 